Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm drawing myself as cartoon characters. A lot of times if I want to draw myself as a cartoon character, I will draw myself into the cartoon. However, recently the cartoons I want to draw myself into are 3D cartoons. And those are much trickier to draw myself into, since they are 3D instead of 2D. But then I thought of my series where I draw myself as video game characters. And I draw myself like I'm a character from the video game universe, but I don't have to draw myself into the game. So I'm going to be doing that kind of format for this video. It's just instead of video games, it's cartoons. The first cartoon I wanted to draw myself into was Miraculous Ladybug. My siblings and I watched the movie recently, and it got me in the mood to draw myself as if I was a character in it. The first thing I needed to decide is what Miraculous should I have. If you don't know, Miraculous are magical charms that have magical beings that give people powers. And each one has their own special power, and they are usually themed around a living creature of some sort, like a cat or a ladybug. This was actually a very hard decision to make, because I had to pick a Miraculous that had a power that I felt like worked well for me, and a Kwame that I felt like would suit me. At first I was thinking about going with the Horse Miraculous, because it has the power of teleportation, and I always think teleportation is really cool. However, I never really like how the Horse Miraculous looks. I don't know, the glasses always look a bit goofy to me. The second option I was considering is the Butterfly Miraculous. I considered it because its power is basically to give other people superpowers, and being that I don't really seem like much of a fighter, it would make sense for me to just have a power that lets other people fight. However, since Hawk Moth is the holder of the Butterfly Miraculous, I felt like I should maybe pick something else. At this point, I really didn't know what to choose, however I decided to start looking at the special item that each Miraculous gives. So like for Ladybug, she gets the yo-yo, Cat Noir gets his staff stick thing, and so on. And well, as I was searching, I found that the Goat Miraculous's item is a paintbrush, and its special superpower is called Genesis, which gives the user the ability to create any object they desire in order to obtain their goal. And when I saw that this Miraculous gives the holder a paintbrush, I was like, I have to pick this one. I'm an artist. <laughs> Plus, I felt like Ziggy's personality would match with mine, since we are both sensitive. <laughs> So yeah, as you can see, I sketched out my rough concept. I wanted to go with something kind of simple and elegant. I kept going back and forth on the skirt since a lot of outfits for the characters are bodysuits. But then I saw that Rose gets a skirt when she transforms with the Pig Miraculous. So I figured I can also have a skirt. I also used Nathan's design when he uses the Go Miraculous as inspiration. Like I added fur accents like he has. And the design is mostly black and white like Ziggy. Also, I do want to apologize. I thought I had Clip Studio Paint capturing my process, but it turns out I didn't, and I didn't use my screen recorder when I was sketching out my picture. But we do have footage for the line art, so you can see more of that. Here is my full rough sketch that I did. As you can see, I have my head turned to the right and the body turned to the left. I'm holding the brush with both hands, the left one being bent and the other one being stretched out. My idea is that this is the pose I would make at the end of my transformation sequence. I wanted the pose to show my personality a bit, and I never really see myself as the type to make like a super aggressive fighting pose. <laughs> Especially since if I was randomly given a Miraculous and superpowers, I would probably be very scared and nervous. For my hair, I decided to have it up in a ponytail, and I was going to give myself a middle part at first, but decided to go with a side part instead. I don't know, I just liked it more for some reason. My hair is kind of long, but it's not like super long. Uh, but the Miraculous has the power to like change your appearance a bit, so I made myself have a really long ponytail. Uh, mostly to give some more movement to the piece and add some interest. Throughout the design, I added diamond-like shapes. This was kind of inspired by the triangle in Nathan's design. I thought about also using triangles, but I kind of like the diamonds more. When I was drawing this illustration, I was kind of trying to keep within the style of the show. So I tried to draw my face closer to the show style and also tried to draw my body proportions in the way the show stylizes them. I kind of noticed it before, but I didn't really notice how thin the ankles and wrists get, especially for the female characters. I tried to draw them thinner than I usually do, but I had to use the liquify tool later to make them even thinner, and also the waist as well. I don't know if I fully mimicked the style, but I think it still gets the point across. It's kind of hard to compare since the show is 3D and I'm working with 2D, and I can definitely tell my style still comes through. <laughs> For the belt part around my waist, I used the border effect setting right here to add an outline to the gray lines I was drawing. This is a super handy feature that I often use for small details, 
or for things like shoelaces. It makes the outlining process for things like this much simpler. I know we still have a bit of line art footage left, but I don't really know what else to say about it. Um, I just got home from my family's house and we were all hanging out and had pizza and it was very yummy. Reagan was also showing me her room. She took my old room since I moved out and I don't live there anymore. <laughs> it's kind of weird seeing my old room without my stuff in it. Uh, plus she painted it a different color. It's super cute, but yeah, it's also kind of weird since like in my head it's still my room, but it's not anymore and it doesn't look like my room anymore. But when I open the door to my room, sometimes I still like expect to see all my stuff. <laughs> So now we are on to the colors, and for the most part, I sticked with the idea I had in my head. Like I made the mask have both black and white to match Ziggy, but I did change the sleeves on my dress to black. I was planning to make them be white, but I don't know, I wasn't totally feeling it. It kind of felt too busy with the collar and then having the sleeves, and it just felt like they were conflicting. Uh, but then I tried the black and I liked that more, so I erased some of the lines that indicated the sleeve. I do wish that I would have changed the gloves to be white since I made the sleeves black, but I didn't think about that until the picture was like done and it was kind of too late to change it unless I wanted to reshade the hands. And I didn't really want to do that. <laughs> since I like the color teal, I wanted to add it to my design somehow. It's kind of a staple when I draw myself into things. I always try to include teal. I wanted to stick with black and white for my outfit, but I let myself add teal to the paintbrush to help it stand out for my design. I didn't want the paintbrush to blend in too much with my outfit. Oh, and later when I'm adding shading, I'll add in some teal shading to the white areas to kind of give a feeling that there's more teal than there really is. Oh, and right here I decided to work on the background. Like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to mimic the ending of the transformation scenes. So I made a shiny black circle that has the goat symbol in it. I did lower the opacity of the circle to make it so we can still easily see my character. And then I added some special effect lines that I changed to be gray to match my colors. It was pretty simple but I feel like it matches the show well. Now we are on to the shading and I'm going to be honest, I'm not in love with the way I rendered this picture. Because Miraculous is a 3D show, I thought maybe I should try to render things in a softer way and also not go super crazy with the colors and try to do something more similar to the show. I have a tendency to use pretty saturated colors for my shading, and I also like to use a lot of different colors. But I tried to keep the colors a little bit more simple this time around and not so crazy. And I also tried to make things more soft. And yeah, I don't like hate it, but I also don't love it. I feel kind of meh about the coloring, but not to the point that I'm like unhappy with the picture. I feel like I'm still pleased with how it turned out, but I feel like I would like it even better if I used my usual rendering style. I think it's because the softer blendy style of shading reminds me of how I shaded in my late teens or early 20s. I was actually starting to feel a bit nostalgic while doing the rendering. <laughs> I was like, whoa, I think this is how I used to shade my pictures. <laughs> so yeah, I was trying to match the show a bit more and it turned out okay, but I don't love it. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, my siblings and I watched the Miraculous Ladybug movie and we all enjoyed it. I won't go into spoilers or anything, but it was different since it was kind of telling the same story in a different way. I liked Adrian's dad more in the movie. I think I also liked how they did a nice job at making Adrian feel like the same character when he is Adrian and when he's Cat Noir. Like in the cartoon, Adrian and Cat Noir act so different that sometimes as the viewer, I have a hard time remembering they are the same person. But in the movie, the personality didn't feel so split between the two. It felt like he was the one character. I do have one complaint about the movie and that it's when Marinette sings, she doesn't sound like Marinette. And I know it's because they got a different voice actor to do her singing voice and the singer is amazing. I love her voice, but it doesn't sound like Marinette and it's very jarring for me. Like it totally took me out of the movie every time Marinette started singing. It felt like it wasn't her singing, it was some other character singing. I don't know, that's just how it was for me anyways. But like I said, the songs were good and the singing was really great. But I do feel like they could have cut back on the songs a little bit. I feel like Marinette had too many songs about feeling like she wasn't good enough to be a hero or whatever. She had like three songs almost all about the same thing. <laughs> oh, but the animation is very pretty and well done. Marinette is absolutely adorable. She's so cute. I do kind of prefer Adrian's model in the show. But this Adrienne is also okay. Oh, but Chloe's model is really pretty. When I saw her, I was like, wow, Chloe actually looks like really pretty. 
And yeah, the animation was really good. Anyways, here's my finished picture of me as a Miraculous Ladybug character. I had a hard time picking which Miraculous I should have, but I feel like I'm happy with the one I chose. Like I said, it had a paintbrush, so I have to pick it. <laughs> Plus it was fun working with the black and white. The next cartoon I'm drawing myself as a character for is Bluey. Now I want to make it clear that I liked to watch Bluey before the internet said it was cool to watch Bluey. <laughs> My younger siblings liked watching it and I started watching it with them because it's actually a really funny and cute show. And a lot of the episodes have deeper meanings to them or lessons that you might catch on to if you're a kid. But watching them as an older person, they definitely come through. And a lot of times I can really relate to the parents since I'm the oldest of a lot of siblings. <laughs> And honestly, I chose this show because one, I do like it, and two, I wanted a simple show with a simple style to draw in. I knew that two of the shows were going to be more time consuming, so I needed something more simple for one of them. Plus, it sounded fun to draw myself as a cartoon dog. The hardest part was deciding on which breed of dog I should make myself be, and how I wanted to stylize myself. I started to go through all the different characters of Bluey, trying to find a breed that I felt like would work well for me. After lots and lots of searching through the Bluey wiki page, I found Bentley, who is a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> I like how I had brown patches since I have brown hair, and I felt like I could stylize my hair into the shape of the ears. Now I know this doesn't totally make sense, but like some of the dog characters do have hair, so I kind of just made my hair and right ear be one shape. I'm drawing myself as a cartoon dog, so I figured I could get away with this. <laughs> Originally, I did have the ears be rounded like Bentley, but I felt like this gave the impression that my hair is curly when it's not. So I decided to straighten out the ears. And I know this kind of goes away from the dog breed, uh, but I don't know, maybe I'm a mixture of different breeds and it made my ears different. In real life, I'm a mixture of many different ethnicities, so maybe in Bluey, I'm a cross of different breeds. <laughs> I used the 4 effect line pen because it stays the same size no matter what pressure I apply to the pen. And I needed the line art to stay the same width. But because the line art is so clean and bluey, it made this process take much longer than I anticipated. I think it's also because a lot of the shapes are really simple and there are a lot of straight lines and clean round edges. You would think simpler shapes would be easier, but they often aren't because with simple shapes it's easier to spot mistakes. So you have to work really cleanly and that can be tricky. If you haven't watched Bluey before, I do recommend it, especially if you have younger siblings that like to watch cartoons. This is one that I can always watch with my younger siblings. I actually got a bit excited today because I saw an ad that there would be new Bluey episodes and I was like, ooh, I want to watch those. <laughs> one of the parts I always like about the show is that a lot of times Bluey and Bingo aren't going on any big adventures or doing things that are really unrealistic for little kids to be doing. They're often just cleaning, playing pretend, playing outside, and the show still manages to keep things interesting, and I feel like they just do a really good job at portraying little kids. But yeah, here is me in Bluey. When my sister Regan saw my design, she said I looked like a kindergarten teacher, and I can totally see it. <laughs> Doing this was a nice break, and it was really fun drawing in this style. The last show I'll be drawing myself as a character for is Star Wars The Clone Wars. I recently finished watching this show with my husband and I absolutely loved it so I wanted to make myself as a character for it. One of the harder parts was deciding which Star Wars race I wanted to be. I couldn't decide so I actually took a few different quizzes and from most of the ones that I took they kept saying I was a Nautilin. Sorry if I'm saying it wrong. And I agreed mostly with this and my husband also thought it seemed like a decent fit so I went with it. I think the quizzes kept saying I was this one because a lot of times they seem more calm and chill, I guess. For this first sketch, I was kind of just trying to figure out how to draw their facial structure. It's still pretty human-like, but also very alien looking at the same time. I'm a fan of the really big eyes. They were fun to draw. I thought about stylizing the tentacle-like head things to match the shape of my hair, but decided to stick with the more common straight back style you see for their designs, uh, just because I don't really know how much they can move around, because all the characters I saw just had them going backwards. And they always have two of these things kind of coming forward around their neck. Also, to give my character the kind of nervous expression I often draw myself with, I give myself some face markings or patterns that kind of mimic eyebrows. For the outfit, I was taking inspiration from many different Jedi outfits. I guess I could have made myself not be a Jedi, but like being a Jedi would be so cool, so I'm gonna make myself be one. <laughs>
With this first design, I gave myself baggy pants, but I ended up changing my outfit a bit with the final design. Once again, I am sorry, I did the same thing with this picture that I did with the miraculous picture, and I don't have footage of me doing the sketches for my illustration. I did it twice. <laughs> A lot of times I'll turn on the recording feature in Clip Studio Paint when I make a new canvas. And I forgot to do that for both of these and I didn't record them with my screen capture software for portions of it because I figured I wouldn't use that footage. Uh, so yeah. But we do still have the line art so that's good. So for the pose I wanted something that featured my lightsaber but also looked cautious and not overly confident or powerful. And I thought this pose did a nice job showing that. By having the one hand being raised in a sort of self-defense kind of way, it gives the feeling of cautiousness. A part of me wanted to make this picture have a more dynamic camera angle, but the point of this picture isn't so much to make a dynamic picture, it's to show off the character and its design. I want to show off the details and personality in an easy to see way that's still more interesting than just a basic T pose. So yeah, I kept the camera angle very straight on so it's easier to see the character. Like I mentioned, I did change the outfit a bit. I changed it to be a sweater dress with three quarter sleeves and I'm going to be wearing leggings under the dress with shin guards. I felt like I needed something to be protecting my legs. I liked the idea of the baggy pants but I went with the dress because I liked the shape more and I felt like it fit the character better. Oh, also, all throughout this, I forget to add my glasses till the very end and you don't even see it in the footage. Uh, but I do end up adding my glasses. My idea is that they're the kind of glasses that kind of clip to your nose. Since I don't really have ears for the glasses to rest on, I guess I could have maybe made it a strap. But having them clip onto my nose seemed like the easiest option. Um, but over the dress, I have a vest-like thing and it goes into a sort of sash-like thing in the middle. Across the waist I have a belt that holds a pouch and I'm also assuming my lightsaber when I'm not using it. I never really noticed it when I was young but a lot of the Jedi outfits remind me of kimonos or yukatas. But I also learned recently that Star Wars was partially inspired by Japanese cinema and samurai. So I guess that does make sense. It was just interesting to me because I never really noticed it until I was studying the outfits for this. For the colors, I'm going to be honest, I had no plan. <laughs> I knew I wanted to mostly focus on tans, browns, golds, and teals, but I didn't totally know how I wanted to do that. So I kind of just felt it out and played around with things until I was pleased. Also, you might be wondering what color I went with for my lightsaber. Well, at first I wanted to pick teal, but the color isn't totally canon and it's only seen in games. And I wanted to pick a color that was more canon and for some reason I really liked the yellow lightsabers. When I saw them in Clone Wars, I thought they looked awesome, but I only ever saw the temple guards have them. But after reading, it seems like other people can have them too. And after reading a bit about the yellow color and its meaning, I felt like it was a good fit. According to what I found, yellow lightsabers are for a different part of the Jedi Order called Sentinels. Sentinels seek balance between the counselors and the guardians and also wish to educate themselves on other more practical aspects of life. They focus their energy more on learning skills outside the Force. And unlike some others in the Jedi Order, they recognize that the Force isn't actually the solution for everything. Being that I often am a more practical person, I felt like this sounded like a good fit. Plus, I really like the yellow, so that's mostly the reason. <laughs> I also really like Ahsoka's lightsabers. The white looks awesome. I saw them in a trailer for the show. I haven't watched the show yet. My husband and I are currently trying to get through all the movies uh, since we finished The Clone Wars. We watched episode 5 recently, so we're getting closer to finishing all the movies. Also, the final episodes for The Clone Wars hit so hard. I won't go into spoilers, but like the episodes were so good, but also made me feel so many things, and I kind of hated it. <laughs> But I loved it at the same time. They were so pretty and Ahsoka was so awesome. And Rex. Oh, poor Rex. Uh, yeah, if you like Star Wars, I highly recommend watching The Clone Wars. It kind of starts out slow, but once you get past the starting stages of the show, it really picks up. I got way more into the show than I thought I would. <laughs> also for this picture, I just let myself shade in my usual shading style. After the whole me not really liking the rendering for the Miraculous Ladybug picture, I kind of just wanted to shade in my usual style. Plus, I wasn't really trying to mimic the style of the Clone Wars for this. I was mostly just trying to draw myself as a Natulin. So, I felt like it was okay to use my usual shading style. You see, if the last picture I was trying to keep everything soft and maybe more 3D model-esque, 
But with this, I let myself define the harder edge shadows with cell shading, and I always really feel like this helps the forms pop and give them shape. Another reason why I wanted to do a video like this, where I draw myself in different ways, is that I was in the mood to design characters. But as I've mentioned recently, I do not need any more original characters right now. <laughs> so by doing this challenge of drawing myself into different cartoons, I kind of get to design things and think about different concepts without needing to make a new character because it's just me. And I know you might be thinking, well, why don't you just design some characters and not make them OCs? I could, but I have found I have a very hard time not making characters I draw BOCs, especially if I put a lot of time into making the design really interesting or giving the character personality and making that come through in the design. And once I finish the design process, I basically have a character and a lot of times my brain will assign a name to them. So yeah. <laughs> So to avoid making a new character, but also help me get rid of the urges to design characters, these videos are very helpful. I just find the process of designing characters so much fun and searching up different references and looking into things and it's just a lot of fun to me. And here is me as a Nautilin. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I was nervous about drawing a more alien-like character, but it was actually really fun and I like how the outfit turned out. And of course, here's my other designs. They were also fun to do. If you have any other cartoons you'd like to see me draw myself as a character for, let me know down in the comments. Well, that is all for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!